Hi guys, Andy Work here. Um, I'm starting the, the build of the prize for the 500 subscriber draw. Uh, and I was talking to the winner the other day on the phone and he asked for a maelstrom from Starfield. <laughs> and then on thinking about it, uh, I decided to do it because I wanted to make some of my own um, blasters anyway and this would be a good learning curve. And it was more of a learning sphere because I screwed up royally in the first few days. So, let's get started, shall we? Hi guys, Andy Work here again, back with my next build for me. Now, no, I'm not doing a spaceship. I'm uh, doing the blaster that's been requested by the winner of the 500th um, subscriber draw, Matt. He wanted a Maelstrom. And... It's not that hard. I've done this sort of thing before, that's why I've got this image. This is a, as you can see, it's called a Lark Mark one. I forget who did it, but um, I liked it so much, I actually did a model of it, 3D model. And it was pretty simple, just taking it from that drawing. I've done this sort of thing before a few times. Now, the difference with the Maelstrom is there's a size you've got to fit it to. Um, you know, it has to be reasonably well in proportion and size. So what I've done here, what I've got, I've got a photo of the Maelstrom taken from the game. I've got a ruler down here that I photographed, hence the shiny bit in the middle that makes it difficult to read, and I've got a transparent image of this mock-up uh, recon that I did. It's roughly the same size and shape. So, what I've done, I've measured this space here, the muzzle, so that's about 220. That is also about 220, and that's a little bit more, I think about 240 or something. So, just to get these um, proportions in place, I'm doing a rough mock-up of the whole shape. And I'll, I'll do that, um, the photo here, I've got the rough size of the body here. And what I always do is I've got a ruler I drew for myself. And that's a three-dimensional ruler. It's got images of the measurements on all sides, so it doesn't matter where I put it. So that's great. So, what I've got is this shape of the actual main body. And what I'm going to do now is just fill it with a transparent, transparency so I can see what I've got to do. So these red lumps here are my rough marks of the spaces. So I can move the ruler out of the way. And I know that corner, that edge there is 220. Now, I arbitrarily decided on 220 because my 3D printer is a 256 by 256 by 256 body. So I can do one piece there, one piece there, and there's a little bit here. And I've decided to do this as an attachment piece because this pipe, which I'm assuming is pipe, it looks like pipe, I've actually got a piece that's um, pretty good size-wise, judging from the um, scale of things. Uh, I might even change it for metal, but if I've got a block here, I can sort of custom print that much stronger to take all the stress it's going to deal, deal with in this area. And the other part of the, the stock obviously is going to be hollow and will just slot, slot over that, and I'll have to make a, um, a catch or something. I'm going to have to make a lot of educated guesses with this, because one thing, you've got this material stuck over it in a couple of places, and also... Um, let me just select that and cut it for a moment. If you look at the way it's drawn, this sort of it's almost like an Escher drawing. You can see the edge here, but you can see the bottom as well. Um, that might be a V going down into the middle, I don't know. But, you know, it, it's a little bit of artistic license. So I've got to make some very educated guesses about it. Having looked at drawings and um, images on YouTube and everything, uh, it's pretty evident that this entire thing is your bolt. Uh, and there's gaps here where you can see through the body. So the bolt, it, a simple percussion weapon, when the hammer, put, when the trigger's pulled, the hammer falls, it fires around. The bolt will move back, and it looks like it can move back to about there. So you've just enough room to pick up another round. Um, so I'm planning to have that gap there. Got controls here. Obviously safety fire. Not sure what this one would be. That's probably the magazine release button. So it's going to be three sections, the front, this middle, and this little end bit here. Right, 
right guys well in my genius I've been an idiot so I'm gonna have to draw the whole thing again uh, and I'm gonna solve a problem I've got with the original image not being placed in SketchUp square it was a few de few degrees off in each axis honestly I don't know how I did that but I'm really good at doing that sort of thing the foregrip doesn't match my body shape at the back and if you look at the images the body shape from the foregrip to the back goes virtually all the way up to here so I'm gonna to have to draw the whole thing again right now so we know all of those things are bad because that drawings off so we can get rid of that we'll leave them there just as reference for the meantime now this one this side I'm going to actually expand it to 10 times its size so expand it to 10 times its size it just makes it a lot easier to draw for some reason um, SketchUp doesn't like small scale um, curves I've got to this point so far this is about after four days now what I'm going to do is just fill that with a, a clear uh, glass so you can see through it there we go so basically now I, I can see what's going on now I can see right away that that isn't far enough forward it must have moved somehow but anyway that's not a problem I also have to take into account that there's a, a perspective angle on this um, drawing so I have to remember that as well so that roughly goes there so that means this piece here has to come down a bit further which is not a great issue just a matter of stretching things ah okay that's an issue I just took that line away and there's no surface there why is that oh I see okay so there's an angle here I have to deal with so this line here needs to come down and be the same angle so I've just got to deal with that so that's not a great issue and so what we're going to do is going to move this down to there then we're going to pull the other piece through oops and it should make an outline all right so that's got that straight where it should be now all this here can't be here because it's actually um, where the magazine goes in but I've got to get that size done first thank you dokie guys uh, here we are after a couple of hours so areas I'm not happy with I like color red or pink or whatever so I'm gonna, I know I've got to get back to them but I'm pretty happy with the shape of the body so far because it's much simpler and easier straightforward um, I've had to if I'm going to have the body divided into three parts and we've got this big cut out in the center for the bolt there's not a lot of material up there so I've added a little chine here I'll blend it in a bit better um, just to give it strength because I'm looking at having the bolt uh, being able to be cocked so there'll be a spring in there in return there'll be two rods hopefully going through the entire lower section much like the Shellington um, Spring Thunder to secure the whole thing and possibly one through the top so I need a little bit of room at the top um, these other things like this piece this piece that they'll probably all be molded onto the front half so just print it all as one go down the back here is a little bit hard to decipher the lighting on this seems to indicate that that's a rounding surface but this is like a beveled surface so I'm thinking there'll probably be some sort of interface here that I've got to work out now it looks like this step here in the body and this bevel stops somewhere here so I'll probably extend this part back and blend it in to this body uh, and work it that way that way there's no step back here that's going to cause issues uh, in fact the step looks like it's there comes right up to the edge of that and even looks like it goes all the way through that little step will give me a little bit of extra material to work with I've got to I've probably got to do a you know printer 
a one six scale of all the parts and see how they fit together and work out something from there. At this stage, unlike my first try, I'm not trying to put all the details in. They can wait. I want to get the blocked shapes sorted. And once I've got those in position, in proportion and everything, and I've done a test, then I can start with all the details. The details are easy, not, not hard to do. It's just getting the basic shape, making, you know, making something that looks like the drawing. That's the most important thing. Right, now on the subject of this buttstock, it's getting, it's got a lot of compound shapes in it, and having that material over it, having to guess a lot. So what I've decided, there's obviously bevels here and here. So what I'm going to do is I've made a beveled shape and followed it along a line of the buttstock. And I'm just going to pull it up for the last little bit. And you'll see how that works. So just get that to follow that line there. So this is called the follow me tool in SketchUp and it's quite useful. I'm sure other ones have got other ideas, other tools that work really well. So once I've done that, now it's just an easy step of taking a line from there and just joining it down here. Fills in all that space, which is great. A little bit of clean up here. And then I can do these two discs, dumbbell shape, and stick it on top. May have to reduce the thickness of that a little bit just so you get a bit more height on these. So that was pretty simple, that part. Now, the next bit. So, drag that up into position just there. Select the other two and delete them. So, I've got that in position. Now, I've got some conflict tissues here, this box and these lines all over the place. So, what I'm going to have to do is cut the bottom of this down so it just sits along that box in there and doesn't get in the way of this because I don't want to have hundreds of lines to delete. So, now you see... Here, I've got room for my inner tube to slide into that. So that's sort of that problem solved, luckily. I'll just have to work it out, do some detailed drawings and stuff. So what I've got to do is get that part blended with that part, blended with that part. So it'll be one at a time. But before I do that, I'm just going to quickly mock up these dumbbells, whatever they are, so I can play around with that as well. So you can see the issue here, that is these this dumbbell thing, whatever it is, is definitely the highest part of the butt. And it continues down in here. So what I've probably got to do is draw that complete part and make it into a separate part. Because just by itself it's just not working. Right, okay, we're back. Now this is about oh day five or six, so I can't remember. You know, getting the hardest thing to do is this buttstock. Um, I know I started it initially and that was a big screw up, but anyway, having this material over, I've had to make some really educated guesses and I can see a little step in the drawing there and a little step there and there and there. So I've done the same thing with the pipe. Now that pipe is currently out of scale with the piece of pipe I'm thinking of using for the actual uh, recoil housing. So I'm going to have to deal with that later. But at the moment, we've got the pipe going back. We've got the body underneath it, which is mostly covered by this material. So I have no idea what it looks like. I can see a curved line there. So I'll put one in there and then a straight line. And then the material appears to be stretched down over this triangular shape. So the triangular shape I've made here is recessed in from the surface of the red. So that should track, hopefully. Uh... And then there are these two circles, which have been so much fun. I'd love to thank the original artist for putting them in. It's been a great deal of effort to get them to blend with this edge here and this edge here. Uh, this is about the fifth revision I've done. But as you can see, the yellow there is just... I'll just cut it for a second. It's just a cap that fits over that. And I've just drawn it on top, just blended in where I need it. So undo that. So when I'm ready, I'll simply intersect those two pieces. After a couple of hours of drawing, come up with a shape. And what it is, I've had to break it down a lot from the different components, even the back base plate here. So we've got the top 
uh, extension that the recoil spring uh, slides into. The body below, that basically anchors everything together. The bottom of the butt stock for your shoulder. This detail. And then I had to actually add this yellow bit that blends the green part of the stock with this red bit. These holes will be filled later there, just place holders at the moment. And finally there's this, uh, on the back, this base plate. Oh, there it is. And so that's pretty much roughly it. So what I've done, I've broken the whole thing apart. They're, they're in components. These are all individual units. And I've got it to intersect with each other. And now I'm just going to go away, go around and delete everything that's not part of it. A few minutes later, very last internal bit. Just a highlight of there. Gone. So, that's our piece. Now before I delete stuff and start grouping things and everything, what I do, select the whole thing and move it across one. So I've always got a backup, so I can go back to any step I want to. So, there's our piece. Still all ungrouped. Looks like one of those funny sculptures, doesn't it? Don't know which way is in and out. Okay, so select it all, and I'm just going to fill it with the same colour. We're cooking with gas. Okay, so that's my shape. Now, Right guys, okay, just got back to the Maelstrom after a break of a couple of days, had a lot of other stuff to do. Parts I'm happy with I do in a green, so happy, happy, happy. This little section here took ages to sort out and get right because I have to allow for the thickness of the pipe. Now that pipe I've got there is 31 millimetres. That hole, that red is 31 millimetres, so it's too big, so I'm going to have to organise something there. As you can see, things are broken down into parts. They're broken down into parts, they're simply different colours so I can tell them apart, so I'm not going to lose anything. The balance is pretty good. Certain things, like up here, I only just noticed, like there's Maelstrom actually embossed in the body, I think, just like the uh, little skull head, you can't even see it there, but it is there. So, got that roughly in place. These things, these pink things, they look like um, Picatinny rails to me. That looks like the way it works. And this is like a full grip, so I, I'm working, you know, with only two-dimensional information here. I get a cup. I've got a couple of different photos that will help me do different designs. Like this was picking out the back end of this. It's just such a confusing shape initially. I really got it wrong. I ended up with something like that, and that is just shocking. So that can actually go away. Why I'm not combining all these things? I'm getting all the parts done. Then there will be adjustments made to get the proportions to look right because the exact dimensions of that photo and this model are not t totally spot on uh, so i'm going to have there'll be everything done like for instance this little protrusion here from the side it just looks like just another flat plate but if you actually check out some of the uh different images it's actually a I guess round counter and that cable runs all the way across the gun down here right down to the muzzle for some reason maybe it's reading the muzzle flashes to know you've shot around I don't know but um, so and we've got an external part here which is on again on this uh, Picatinny rail these two are bare something's on that side don't know what it's doing appears to have a wire going down to the um, muzzle as well. A little red one that hooks in there. So there's going to be, you know, multimedia in this thing when it's made. The, that cable will probably be uh, high temperature water hose from a car. Um, and I'll custom make some clips to fit onto it and the bends everything. But as you can see, so we're getting there. The, the shape is coming together. I've just got to do the hole in the body and then the bolt that sits in there and all the little bits and pieces and the scope not a great deal of stuff it's just you know one thing at a time and a magazine still has to be considered and i'm leaning more and more to actually um printing a magazine as opposed to using a nerf one because 
not a lot not a lot of similarities between the two. I could very well just simply print like something that clips on the base there. Uh, but since it's not going to be an actual functioning Nerf gun, I don't think it's going to matter and a, a solid magazine would probably work. I'd like to make the magazine catch working. I'd like to make the trigger working. I'd like for the, the bolt to be cockable um, and all the little switches to work. And it, it's possible to do it, just a lot more work. And I've got the time, uh, but one thing at a time. So once I've got the basic shape do, done, then I'll go through and, you know, the detail I've got to do here, the detail I've got to do here, the detail here, and so on. So step by step by step. And as that happens, like, for instance, this maelstrom that's embossed in the body here, I've put it here as a 3D text ready to go to make up uh, embossing uh, recess in the body but I'm not going to put it in until I know the proportions of where it goes is going to be in proportion with the slots with the little skull here with this everything so that's all last minute detail but it helps me at this stage to position things and place things in the correct proportion to each other so that's where I'm at now uh, I've just spent a couple of hours on this so I'm going to take a break and talk to you soon